a seed will produce a tree and a tree will produce fruit and the fruit will produce uh, seeds again and it's a cycle that continual cycle that happens in the earth seed time and harvest seed time and harvest seed time and harvest all the time i pray to god that you get to a place that you don't allow your upbringing, you don't allow your family history to stop you. I don't know about you, but one day I woke up and I began to realize, as I look at my family tree and I saw poverty, 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 I said, wait a minute, the buck stopped here. And now, with today's word, life coach and pastor, Randy Morrison. Father, once again, we are grateful, thankful. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to break bread together. Thank you for helping us to see the importance of your instructions. We ask, so oh God, that we'll be able to take the word and apply it. It's in the application of your word that the blessings flow. So open our eyes to see what your spirit is saying to the church today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis, the 15th chapter. I love reading the story of Abraham, the patriarch, Abraham, the father of the faith. And uh, even though Abraham had success, he had things he had was to go through. Every promise that God made to Abraham, he had, it was a process to get there. And many things happened in between when he started and when he ended up where God wanted him to be. But in chapter 15 of Genesis, verse 1 says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. In a vision, after these things, what things? The things he'd been through when he left uh, Earl of the Chaldees and uh, spent time with his father in Iran, and there his father died, and then God told him to keep moving, and he went uh, south, he took Lot with him, and he got in some trouble, because God never tell him to take Lot with him. He said, let's take your wife and your, your stuff and go, but he brought Lot. Watch out for the Lots in your life. They'll tie you up. But after Lot left, the Lord spoke to him, lift up your eyes and look. God was trying to get Abraham to see what he has promised him. So after he helped Lot get out of his troubles and, and to separate himself, it says here that the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, to confirm what he already spoken to him. God will only speak to you a word and speak to you that same word again until it's fulfilled. See, sometimes you, I want a new revelation. You're not even working on the old one you got. Why will God give you something new? You know, what, what God, a new thing. New, new what? God is still trying to do what he promised us from the beginning of time. Until we fulfill what God has instructed us to do, we should not look any other place until it's fulfilled. Are you still in the house? See, so many times we want things new, but not, listen, not doing what God has asked us to do. So it says here that God came to him in a vision. God can speak to us through vision. God can speak to us through dreams. And sometimes God will use an audible voice. But I don't think he needs to use an audible voice today because we got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the Holy Spirit can, can confirm some things in our hearts. I love the Holy Ghost. He says when he comes, he will teach you and he will guide you. I don't know about you. I refuse to be confused because I got the Holy Ghost. What I need to know, he will show it to me. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. The things that are revealed belongs to me. I have not seen, I have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. And I can't speak for you, but I can speak for Randy Morrison. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So God says, do not be afraid. Why was Abraham afraid? Because he, he conquered some kings, and, and, and back in those days, the people don't like to fail. So if a king get defeated, they want to regroup and come back. So Abraham had that fear all the time. Are they going to come? These three kings that are defeat, are they going to come back and get me? And God said, don't worry about them. Once you defeat the devil, you don't have to worry about him in that area of your life again. Amen. Amen. See, we always think about, is he going to come back? No, he's not. Not in the same form or the same way. He might try different approaches. 
But praise God, we don't have to be afraid. Fear is not part of the makeup of a believer. Fear came with a curse. Fear came when Adam and Eve sinned. They was afraid and they hid themselves. God says, who told you all this stuff? Half of the stuff we believe, we believe based on what others have told us and not what God says. I will preach this message all by myself. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. I got it. I like to say God got my back. I don't have to be afraid because God got my back. God knows the end from the beginning. God knows where I should be, when I should be there. Why should be afraid? You know, so many people are all, all, this is end times, and all scared. What are you scared about? Well, what if you die? Then you go to heaven. Christians are the only people who believe in heaven but don't want to die to get there. Are you hearing me? There is nothing to be afraid. God got it. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. I am in the will of God. Everything that God speaks to me is his will. Woo-hoo! Good preaching, Pastor. I got to encourage myself this morning. I'm like David, encouraging himself in the Lord when it's taught about stoning him. Amen. So, he said, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. People can make promises but never fulfill it. Your politician make promise to you and they lie to you. Here you are. Still broke, disgusted and sad. God is the only one who is man enough to make a promise and keep it in spite of the circumstance you face. Even Abraham messed up, went on to Egypt and messed up. God still said, come on, I'm not done with you yet. God is never done with us. You may be quick to be done with God and be done with everything and give up. God does not quit on you. So why are you quitting on yourself? Abraham, don't be afraid. I am all that you can believe me for. And God said to Moses, I am of the I am. See, God don't have to give you his resume. I am all that you can believe. What you can believe God for, he can become. If you can believe, the Bible said, all things are possible to him who what? Believe. Belief is not just a stationary word. It's an action word. You act upon it because you believe it. And that's what God is saying to Abraham. You see, every prophetic word you receive should be a validation for your assignment from God. God will always validate you. Don't think you're not smart enough, good enough. God doesn't make any flops. We make flops of ourselves. You let your teacher tell you that you're no good. You let your teacher tell you you're not smart enough, but God never said that about you. He said to Jeremiah, do not say I'm a child. Come on. What I created you for, you can be. That's what I love about living on this human planet. I don't let any human being decide my future for me. I let the word of God decide it. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what I love about this story here. God, the word of the Lord came to him saying. But look at verse 2. But Abraham says, why we like to argue with God? We think we are more God and God is God. We, we want to tell God what's not going to happen. Well, God, you know, uh, I know you said it, but. We, you see, see, God celebrates us when we believe what he says. When we believe what God says, he celebrates that. The thing that grieves the heart of God the most is when we doubt him. That's why Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness. Because they doubt God's ability to do what he says that you can do. God believes more in us than we believe in ourselves. It's time that the church start to believe what God's word says. If God says fear not, don't have any fear about anything or anybody. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? So this is 25 years 
that he believed in God for 75 when God told him about the promised child. He looked at Sarah and said, oh my God. <laughs> looked at himself and said, oh, I need some Viagra or something here. See, you guys can handle me. I'm too real for you. You're just so spiritual. I'm not, okay? I'm going childish, and the heir of my household is Eliezer. In you is my assistant. See, we always want to, 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 to give away what God promised us. We always want somebody else. We like to look or become spectators of somebody else's blessing instead of saying, wait a minute, you're not going to enjoy my blessing. My blessing is for me. Amen? What God has for me comes to me, and I want to embrace what God has for me. God promised him that he will have a child. In the process of time, fear and doubt and disappointment, see, things come in your life to test to see if you'll continue to remain on the course that you started on. People don't remain on the course. We, we have this quitting spirit. There's a spirit in America that I like to quit. You don't like pressure, you quit. You don't like your job, you quit. We're more good at quitting than proceeding and pressing in. Hallelujah. Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. God did give it to him. God told him, whatever God speaks to you will come to pass. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He has spoken, and he will make it good. It might not come in your time. He might not come when I want him, but he is right on time. Everything is with time and with God. When Mary told Jesus to, to help in the wedding, he says, my time is not yet. Galatians said, when the fullness of time came, God said, God is the God of time. And sometimes the we're not ready for what God has for us because we are stuck based on what we are experiencing in our lives. He is speaking about his condition. If you promise me and call me Abraham, father of many nations, how come I don't have a child? Mm. You have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir, and uh, behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. In other words, God says, What I have for you is on the inside of you, and it's going to come out of you one of these days. Amen. Some of you need to speak your dream out. Let's don't talk about somebody else or what you don't have. Talk about what you got. If you got a word from God, that's good enough. Amen. See, that's why Peter says, to whom shall we go? You have the word. You have what we need of eternal life. Mary said, be it unto me according to what? The word. God's word will always come to pass because he watches over, he watches over his word, not your circumstance. Not your conditions. God has a way of ignoring what you're going through because he's looking at what you're going through. Amen. Woo -hoo. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then, then God says, Okay, okay, Abraham, since you're stuck where you are, get out of your tent. See, sometimes God got to move us away from the negative environment we build our house in. Every time God wanted to do something, one time he wanted to heal a, a, a blind man, he took him out of the city. One time he wanted to heal uh, the centurion daughter, then he cast them all out. He get, get rid of the unbelief. What is keeping us from being all that we can be is our unbelief, failure to believe that God's word is true. That's our biggest problem is doubt. And doubt is simply the areas of your life where you have not experienced God yet. Mm? God will always ask you to do something you have never experienced before. Read your B-I-B-L-E every single time that God came to someone and told them about the future, tell them about the possibility, they didn't have anything. 
in line with it. It was contradictory to the circumstance. Because God does not consult your present conditions to predict your future. Good preaching, Pastor Randy. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven. See, we see things, but we don't look into things. Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. You see, friends, when we allow ourselves to see what God wants for us, the limitation of space and time will not limit us. Whenever we allow, you have to allow yourself, let God, let God, let God be true. See, God is not truth in your life because you don't let him be true. You let what other people say is true. What is the Sunday school teacher or the third grade teacher said is true. But it says, let God be true. I love this. And every man a lie. So anything that you say towards me or say about me that is not in line with God's word, I have God given right to call you a liar. Let God be true. Every man a liar. So everything that comes out of the, the mouth of a person is based on circumstances, situations, looking at what you're going through instead of what you're going to. Come on. There is no limit, no limits. There's no space and time when it comes to God. God lives in an eternal now. When we are able to recognize that the, our future is just as real as the here and now. God wanted to see it like you got it. You're gonna see it before you get it. I'll talk to my new screens here. You're going to see it before you get it. You don't realize I saw this thing many, many years ago. See, what I really, really, really wanted was the whole wall with screens. But then I went and I saw the price. I said, praise the Lord. Why are we going to start somewhere? Are you hearing me? See, you've got to dream beyond your limitations. You, you got to see things before it comes to a reality in your life. That's why God said, Abraham, look, look, picture the stars. Get an image on the inside of you of what you want out of life. Some of you have no image of yourself beyond where you are. Then they get mad at me or somebody else who is seeing himself. Preaching. In verse 6, he says, and because God showed him, the possibility of what could be. And Abraham recognized, my God, God mean business with this thing. It says, and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord and he accounted to him for righteousness. It's time that you start to believe what God says about you. It's time that you believe what God sees in you, that you start seeing in yourself. If God sees greatness in you, start seeing greatness in yourself. If God sees that you are somebody, start acting like somebody instead of a nobody. When I walk this earth and wherever I go, I walk like I'm somebody. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I was at a restaurant last week with some pastors, you know, and uh, the people who serve and come up and go, uh, I never tell them I'm a preacher. So they say, Randy, oh my God, oh my God. And they said, do you know them? I said, well, they're my friends. Because I tip them really good, that's why. Are you still here? See, you got to start living this thing, acting like you got it before you get it. Huh? See, see, when Joseph went before Pharaoh, he, he realized his dream was about to take another turn. And the fulfillment of what he saw when he told his brothers, you're going to bow to me, it was an open door to success and the Bible says he shaved his face and he changed his garment. He began to act successful before he became successful. 
It's time that the church began to act on what they believe. Say, believe God is God, then believe him. If you believe God can do all things, believe it. If you believe you can do all things through Christ, who strengthens you, believe it. I don't limit myself. I don't limit my mind. If I believe something, praise God, I'm going to pursue it in the name of Jesus. I don't want to leave nothing for chance. Because if God said it, Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. Try to act like it. Don't, don't, don't try to get a substitute for what I've already promised you. Are you hearing me? See, true faith has the ability to see God's hand in everything he asks us to do. You're going to see God's hand. Even though something goes wrong in your life, you should jump and get excited. Because all things work together for good to those who love God. Do you believe that, people? Oh, no, my God, it's getting worse. No. When Joseph was thrown into the pit, uh, uh, he, he, he said to the boys, Hey, brothers, wrong pit. Because that wasn't part of his dream. When he was sold to the Ishmaelites uh, and he's getting that cart uh, going on to Egypt, he waved at his brothers and said, I'll see you later. I will be back. Soul to Potiphar. Scrubbing floors. But he said, hey, this is not really, it's only a pathway to where I'm going to be. Get lied upon. Have you ever been lied on? Yes. Huh? But he didn't allow the lies to impact him. He got thrown in prison. But it was a movement towards his dream. See, don't underestimate your troubles. Sometimes things have to move in your life to move you out of where you are. You get you a little setback and you quit. You give up. It's not working. All things, all things, I'm trying to get my English right. All things work, 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 work. 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 You're going to see it working. You're going to see that layoff from your job working. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's promotion time. God got something better for me. Work for your good. True faith has the ability to see God's hand in everything he asks us to do. So, 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 so this is what we, we're talking about for the time I share with you. The, we are currently having a discussion on the subject seeing through God's eyes beyond our reality. God wanted Abraham to get beyond what he thought was real. Your reality is not God's reality. A few. Are you hearing me? See, the view that we have about ourselves will never be compatible to the thoughts and view God has about us. They are just not on the same level. God does not think on your level. This book wasn't written on man's level. When God speaks, he speaks from a position of strength, never from a position of weakness. How dare you go to God and tell him what's not going to work? Because when you're doing that, you're saying, I don't believe what you said. He's not a man. He's not your, your earthly daddy. Because your daddy failed you. You put God in the same category with, with your daddy who lied. So only you're going to do something and didn't do it. So now you come, you hear father and you, you shrivel back because, oh my God, you're thinking about your earthly father. He said about the God of the universe. Are you still in the house? God, never think on our level. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. <laughs> huh? So here is Abraham thinking about what he don't have, and God talk about what he got. See, you cannot convince God out of what he believed. 
So stop it. Stop the doubt. Stop the fear. Disagree with God. Amen? See, 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 God was not denying Abraham's feelings and Abraham's experience. But Abraham was allowing his feelings and ex experience to supersede God's word. And that's the problem. Yeah. And that's just the way I feel. Feel that way if you want to, but what does the word say? Right. Preach it, Pastor. My ways are far beyond your you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I love what Ephesians 3.20 says, with God's power working in us, God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. Because our imagination is limited to our human experience. We can't see beyond that. Or we see where we came from. And you don't understand how hard it is. <laughs> how, how, how long have you been talking about that trouble? How long have you been talking about you cannot make it? Notice what you're talking about is happening. I'm never going to make it. You're right. How would you like God to agree with you in your condition? I'm going to die. You're right. Boom. Dead. Thank God he doesn't respond to our negativity. Because if God responds to our negativity, every one of us will be dead by now. When Peter was walking in the water, and Peter looked, and he saw the waves, he began to sink. Then he cried out to the Lord, save me. And the Lord saved him and said, Peter, why did you doubt? So if you're sinking, it's because you're doubting. Because God walks on what we're sinking. Moses, what do you got in your hand? You're crying about the Egyptians. You're crying about the mountains. You're crying about the Red Sea. But what do you have in your hands? There's a stick. God says, give me that stick, let me anoint it. Whatever God's anointed has got power. And how many know that God anointed you? Amen. So you got power. Are you still in the house? He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Huh? According to that word that's working, is, what, is work, what is working in you this morning? What is working in you, ABC, CNN, Fox News? See, that's what working people, because that's all they talk about, how bad is things. Oh, my God, it's getting bad. Oh, my God, the government is going to shut down. What are they going to do? I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. They, they need me. I don't need them, because it's from my creativity I pay taxes. I already paid my taxes. Then they, they, they sent me a, a note that I owed. I said, I said, no. <laughs> they, you don't take care of your business. So now I've got to write them back. I said, I did, dummy. <laughs> I have proof. It's amazing how quick they, they want to send you a bill and charge you 50% interest. But when they owe you money, though. That's why I don't go along with that crap. Sorry. God got to become the center of your attention. Amen? So, so let's take a look uh, 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 and see how to see through God's eyes from the story of the prophet Elisha. And how it transpired when he was confronted with the resistance from the king of Syria. Here Israel was combating, was in war with Syria like it is today. Since he was telling the king of Israel all that the, the king of Syria military secrets. 
So here, here he was telling the, the president of Israel, see, the reason why what happened happened because they ain't listening to God. Hmm? Because here we find a man of God. They honor the man of God. And because they honor the man of God, see, a prophet was a seer. They was led by prophets, people who, who hear from God and tell them, look out for this, look out for that. But when you think you can do things yourself and depend on your own strength and your own might, you got to fight a lot. I'm preaching. See, see, we got to understand that, that God is on our side, as he said to Abraham. I am your shield, I am your exceeding great reward. You can believe that. And here, we find in this story, because uh, Elisha told uh, about uh, the, the, the Syrians' military secret, uh, the king of Syria decided to dispatch a, a large number of men to capture Elisha. You see, when you have the power to reveal the deception that Satan has, prepare yourself for an assault on your life. See, that's why the devil wants to keep us ignorant. Because once we have information, and once we understand the God of the universe, he, he, he show up. The devil never show up in your life until they hear a word from God. Jesus. After he was baptized in the river Jordan, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. And guess who showed up? The Bible said he fasted 40 days. I am really concerned about people telling me the fast a long time and they heard God. No, the voice you're going to hear is the devil. The Son of God did not hear God because he heard what God says after the baptism. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, right? So he had that validation. So after he spent the time in the wilderness, the devil showed up. Because the devil recognized, oh my God, here is the one that was prophesied in Genesis, the third chapter, the seed of the woman will cross the head of the serpent. Here he is, attack! The moment you can expose the devil, get ready for an attack. The moment you want to say yes to God, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to love you, Jesus. Where you lead me, I will go. Get ready for an attack. When God goes to bless you, he sends a post in your life. When the devil goes to curse you, oh yeah, he sends a person in your life. That's why you need discernment. Are you still here? So let's look at what happened in verse 11 to 17 of 2 Kings chapter 6. It says, therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, will you now show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He thought he had a snitch in the camp. No, the snitch wasn't in his camp. The snitch was in Israel. Because God showed him through a word of knowledge what was taking place. Are you still in the house? He says, uh, I need to know Will you now show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants says, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet. Oh, we need some men of God today. We don't need prophet liars. We need men who know the truth. See, a lot of people call themselves prophets today, they're prophet liars. I don't believe in too much prophets today. That they don't have all the thing about is themselves. The only thing they can prophesy about is money. That you give it to them. So you can be blessed. But they don't give a lick. Preachers is the most tight what preach be on the planet. I'm I'm amongst them. I know I know the inside stories, okay? And I'm gonna expose it, okay? It's all right. See, they don't they doesn't really live up to what they say. Because the prophet lied, and when it will come to pass, they will never admit they missed it. Huh? I told a friend of mine, you know, he said, a prophet that says, I don't believe in you. He said, what, why? I said, because he didn't tell me the pandemic was coming. 
If you know God so much, why can't you, instead of prophesying about, yeah, 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 there's somebody out there send $50, that's all you know. Schemes. But if you're really a man of God, you'll be on TV and you'll be crying out to God, people get ready. People get ready. A pandemic is coming. It's going to come from China and it's going to go throughout Europe and it's going to come across America and the whole world will be shut down for two years. I'll be saying, you really a man of God, but you didn't say that. Now people prophesying again now, prophesying again, back to the same old tricks. I don't know about you, but that pandemic changed me. <laughs> I said that pandemic changed me. Being stuck, you couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do anything. My God, the moment they said that you can fly, I was on an airplane with my mask on too. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, pastor, if you believe, why do you, why do you have to wear a mask? I was wearing wear, wear it for me or for you. Because you come up, me, and you're all scared. Oh my God, he don't have a mask on. So I put on this, so keep you quiet. Are you hearing me? Amen. Because I believe no weapon that formed against me shall prosper, neither any tongue that rise up against in judgment. I'm going to call it to me the wrong. I'm preaching. So here, he says, None, my Lord. But Elisha the prophet, who is in Israel, tell the kings of Israel the word that you speak in your bedchamber. See, that king was in fear himself because he heard of the, the, the movement of the troops and, oh my God, they're going to attack us. But here, the man of God put him at ease. We need men of God who will put our leaders at ease. Instead of fighting which party he belongs to. I do not know if the king of Israel was a Democrat or Republican. Elisha didn't care who he was in office. The thing that Elisha shared with the king of Israel came out of a word of knowledge. Part of the revelation gifts that God has given to the church, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and the sending of spirit is part of the nine manifestations that we need to see happening again in the church. Remember, the word of knowledge has to do with things that actually exist, as well as things from the past. It is not something that is known by common experience that our natural eyes have seen. Our natural ear has heard, and nothing that our natural mind can understand. This was a supernatural manifestation of God, knowledge, to the plan of the king of Syria. Why can God not tell you when something is going to go down? Don't go this way, go that way. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Are See, we get in trouble. Why? Because many times we, we, we don't listen to the Spirit of God. He's speaking all the time. Don't, don't eat that. Oh, Pastor, who oh, play for me, my tummy? Did God told you not to eat it? Yeah, but it was so nice. <laughs> Half the things we want God, want prayer for, God has told us about it already. Amen. God has told us what we need to do. But we want to do it. Because we like our flesh too much. Feel good to the flesh. Feel good, do it. Something may feel good, but kill you. Amen. So here, yeah, through the word of knowledge that he, he revealed. So he, the king of Syria, said, Go and see where he is that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Get ready for warfare when you're doing the bidding for God. See, sometimes we think, well, if it was in the will of God, they was not going to attack him. No. See, I, I, I used to believe that, well, you know, well, maybe he did something wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. He was just telling the truth. See, you can't say, well, I did something wrong. That No, no, no. The Bible said the devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking, seeking whom he may devour. 
The devil do not like you. You are his enemy because you are created in the image and likeness of God. Because you're acting like God on the planet, he's going to attack you. Just as he attacked Jesus, he's going to attack you. Who in the world do you think you are? So they send the horses and chariots. Look, look, look how much a whole army to get one man. He had to be powerful. Uh, if you get two little goblins coming and tickling your feet, <laughs> you ain't doing nothing for God. But if you're really doing something for God, if you are, are, are changing people's lives, the devil will try to send everything, all his arsenal against you to get you out of the way. Because he believes if he can stop the man of God, then the secrets will be stopped. It says, and when the servant of the man of God rose early, so they came all night, so in the morning time, and went out. There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant, his servant ran back, said to, to him, at last, my master, what shall we do? You see, not because somebody is sitting underneath the ministry that means they got faith. Yeah? Some of you come here, you sit here every single week, and I hear some of you talk sometimes, I wonder what church you go to. I'm sick. I'm coming here. I feel so bad. Yeah. Are you still in the house? See, I don't care about what you're doing here. I care about what you do out there. When you lose your job, let me see if you believe what I, you, I preach. You say amen to it. But when, when, when it happened to you, let me see what you believe. I do not know what you believe until you get into some hot water. Amen. What shall we do? Hmm? See, he did not know that he needed to pray. He did not know that he could ask God for wisdom. We always run into somebody else. You know, there's stuff people have called prayer chain and call dial a prayer. It's a bunch of bunk. Pray for yourself. You send in prayer requests into ministries. They don't pray that they open it, and if there's no money, they throw it away. Find somebody. Have a person in your life that you can, can come into agreement with you. If two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. I don't need a whole troop. I just need one person to believe with me. If I'm lying in a hospital bed, don't come and see me if you're not going to bring some faith with you. Thanks, too. How are you feeling, man? Get out of the room. Nurse! Nurse! You know, Jesus put people out when he was about to heal. <laughs> he got so far. Let's get him out of here. So you kind of had. No, I'm just trying to be like Jesus. You think I'm tough? He's tougher than I am. Because when the disciples couldn't cast out the spirit, he, he rebuked them. Where's your faith? That's Jesus, your master, your Lord and Savior. Not the stuff that you paint and put it on walls. What shall we do? Have you ever asked that question? Pastor, what should I do? So what should I do? I got three jobs off. Uh, what should I do? Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> People have the stomach. <laughs> what, what do you think I should do, Pastor? If you have to ask me, you're in trouble. <laughs> should I take this one or take that one? Take the one with the most money. Come on. <laughs> Jeez, simple common sense. Uh, because you see, you don't see it in yourself. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask to think according to what's working in us. Are you hearing me? God don't limit us, we limit ourselves. Are you still in the house? Notice what the servant perceived to be his reality determined his response. What you perceive as your reality will determine your response. 
Just because I don't respond the way you do does not mean I don't care. My pastor don't really care. He didn't cry with me. It isn't happening to me, it's happening to you. If you want to cry, go right ahead. Boo! Okay, after they're done crying, what did God say to Moses? Why, 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 why cry after me? Why cry after me? What's in your hand? That's God, man. This wimpy God preaches, preaches, not God. God is a God of business. Because he wants his will to be done in your life. He wants you to have what he already promised you. What our eye have not seen and our ear have not heard. What has not entered into our hearts. God is saying, why don't you get it, people? I don't want God to talk to me three or four times about one thing. I want to have instant obedience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't want to go to a whale university to obey God. The moment God says, yes, yes, Lord, because I don't want to go back to take the class over again. I think God was British. <laughs> In the British system, when I was growing up, if you fail the grade, you do not go to the next grade. You have to stay there for a whole year with your big self. <laughs> I have experienced that. And then your friend said, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So what happened? It's, for, it's to force you to work harder and study harder. <laughs> Today we just put everybody two grades and then either go in dumb and come out dumb. <laughs> Do dumber. <laughs> Amen? Because, oh, that's okay. Give him, make the test easy. No. Make the test hard. Because in the hardness and the pressure, see if you're going to lift weights and get biceps, you kind of put a, a, a half a pound on this thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see, if you can lift that, you put more. You can lift that, you put more. Yeah. See, because the, when they get you, because the, the pressing of, that's what developed the muscle. Not the easy stuff. Easy believing. Make, make it easy. Don't make it too hard. If you wait for all the conditions to be right, Nothing will get done. Hmm? You see, if we restrict, restrict our attention to the present moment of difficulties, we might not be able to see the answer that is necessary for our, 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 us overcoming the challenges of life. If you are restricted, there's to the attention, giving attention. We give attention to the wrong things. We talk about how big it is. Oh, I've got a lump here. It's getting bigger. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's a, uh, and we, 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 we sing the praises of the devil. Wow. What he's doing. Notice how much time we talk about the devil. When the devil, the devil talking to me. Wow. The devil talks to you? Wow. Why, if the devil talk, why are you listening? You know he's a devil, Paul. What are you listening? The devil told me I can't make it. Well, say, you are a liar, devil. I can make it. Whatever the devil says to you, believe the opposite. That's what I do. So in every moment, don't give your attention to the external. Give your attention to the eternal. Because you will not overcome when you encounter life. The servant saw the enemy through the standpoint of his worries and fearful emotions rather than through the lens of his faith in God's word. He was very emotional about it. What shall we do? Oh my God. Oh my God, Elijah. Elijah. He's coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. I love what Elijah did. I know I'm very emotional, but leave me alone. I'm old. I'm old now, so leave me alone. I'm going out with a bang, baby. So, he answered. Every time you ask a question, prepare yourself for the answer. It may be an answer that you do not like. See, we ask questions, but we want only answers that we like. 
In other words, we already make up our mind the kind of answer we want, so we reject the answer that we don't want. He answered, do not fear. Wait a minute. What do you mean do not fear? Can you see? All these people, thousands, they come in. Do not fear. Because fear has a way of paralyzing you. Do not fear, he says. For those who are with us. I got to give a Holy Ghost to a kid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When Jesus was uh, in the garden and Peter cut the air off uh, and Jesus said, I could have called angels. Because we are surrounded by them. See, the seventh fear was of what uh, his natural eyes saw misrepresent the total reality of a situation. What you are looking at will cause you to misrepresent, misinterpret what God says. See, we base everything on our experience, so we interpret things a certain way. Just because you are interpret your situation a certain way does not mean you are sentenced to a life sentence. Here's my whole my life because that's your interpretation. But somebody will come and tell us, see, different. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about that? See, because so many times we get so focused on what will not work instead of what will work. Are you still in the house? You see, there's always a conflict between what we see and what God wants us to understand about the world around us. Who created the world? I said, who created this world? God. In the beginning, God. God created. God, not you. God created the heavens. and God created the earth. And he knows how this earth is supposed to function. All Jesus did when he walked on this planet was restoration, putting things back. He said, I'm on a crippled hand. He said, stretch it forth. Uh, get up and walk. Come on, somebody. Woman bent over. Art not this daughter of Abraham who Satan has bound? Lord, he's 18 years. Be loosed. That's Jesus. Lord, he's dead. No, he's only sleeping. Amen. Look at verse 17, then Elisha, then Elisha, he prayed. That's what's missing in our lives. Pray, give us insight. When you pray, don't tell God what. You pray to hear God. Then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see, and I can just see him. Don't pray that, 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 that man of God. I, I do respect your preacher, but you don't understand my situation. You don't understand what I'm going through. That's what we do. Now a person came to me and I said, well, the word, well, I don't want to hear what the word have to say right now. Then get out of my office. Because all I'm going to tell you what the word says. We don't want to hear what the word says when we're going through things. We want sympathy. We, we want you to feel sorry for us. Uh, come on, somebody. I don't want to feel sorry for you. I want to cast that thing out of you. Amen. Come out. That's what you need. Not, oh, you know, yeah, we all go through stuff. Yeah, I know that. But here, the man of God did something that the servant did not do. Because if the servant was spiritual enough and sitting under the man of God for all his time, saw all his miracles, he didn't have enough guts to say, ha, 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 whoa, come on, bring what you got. Right. Born to run and hide. What shall we do? Well, Elisha was doing what the, man of, what the servant was supposed to be doing. He prayed. Open his eyes that I, he may see. He saw. No, he didn't see into things. He didn't look into things. 
He didn't look beyond the circumstance. We don't look beyond our circumstance. We don't look beyond our trouble. Every problem, behind every problem, there's a solution. That's why some people get rich in us and we become, there's, there's people who are consumers. Because people don't see there's problems. They see solution. Everything that you have in your life is somebody solving a problem. Then you've got to pay for it. Then the Lord, thank God for his grace and mercy in spite of us. Then the Lord opened the eyes. See, I can never open your eyes. I can tell you until the cows come home. What all I can do is pray that God will open your eyes, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling. But you have to be receptive to that. You can't fight it. You can't say, well, that's not what I need right now. That's what he needed. He didn't need it. Elijah to put his arm around him and say, oh, mama, okay, yeah. Oh, my God, let's get fearful together. Hmm? We just want sympathy and empathy. And all these words not even in the Bible. You don't need sympathy and empathy. You need some power. Because after it's all said and done, I give you empathy and sympathy. You still got a problem. But oh, my God. If you can agree as touching anything. If you can get up from where you are and start walking out there facing them circumstances of your life and you prophesy to them, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, you can touch us. In a, no, he didn't do that. But he prayed. And when he prayed, what happened? What happened when he prayed? The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, I pray to God that he can open your eyes that you can see. That you can see that we just don't live in a natural world. There's a spiritual world. There's a spiritual sides of things. The, the spiritual world is more real than the natural world. The things in this world are temporary. It's subject to change. You can speak to it. You can talk to it. It got to change because God spoke it into existence. And if I put God's word in my mouth and I start speaking as God speaks, something going to change. Come on, I'm closing here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to get this out to you today. It says, and he prayed. He saw because he no longer was looking at the circumstance. He was looking beyond it. Sometimes he needs to see through things and see the possibility of what can happen. Then he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. That's why you need to get around people who are really men and women of God. Instead of your friends who can see nothing but your troubles. Hmm? The prayer did not create the angels, it only revealed them. Amen. It only revealed what was already there. Hello. Don't be like the fish in the ocean that think that's it. Can work. There be no world. Ain't nothing beside this. Until he saw something and he bite it and it was a hook. And he gets pulled out of his environment into another environment. Oh my God, there's people up here. <laughs> huh? Let the word of God hook you and pull you out of the natural. Pull you out of your circumstance. Let the word of God, come on, let your prayer praise God. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus that this thing is going to change. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Ah, feel it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Ow. Come on, somebody. Let the word of God be the anchor of your soul. Get that word inside of you so you can see from God's point of view. Amen. Amen. We don't pray to change things. We pray to change us. Let's stand to our feet. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Oh, I hope somebody gets us today. I hope somebody gets us today. 
Maybe you're watching my live streaming. I hope you get it today. I don't care if it's in Africa. I don't care if it's in Latin America. I hope you get it today. Somebody got to get this and start believing God. Seeing through God's eyes beyond our reality. Wow. That should change the way you look at life. You put a smile in your face. I get tickled when people say, Pastor, you don't even look your age. I said, thank you. Because I got a Caleb anointing. As he was at 45, so he was at 85. Give me that mountain. I'm a living example of that. Throw me in the fire, I come out not smelling like smoke. I'm still here. Person say to me, Do you still pass and then I speak the word church? I gotta keep the hand on the side, you know. So slap them. Stupid. Sorry, folks, I'm old enough now so I can say things. <laughs> Come on, God love you. He's waiting for you to see what he sees. Come out of your limitation, your limited view of your life. Quit seeing yourself just as an ordinary person, a black person, a white person, a Hispanic person. He's quit seeing that. That don't matter with God. That's not, God doesn't call it by ethnicity. See the way God wants you to see. See yourself going places. See yourself when God gives you a word. See that word working in you. The old David Ingram song, the, work is, the word is working mightily in me. The word is working mightily in me. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the word is working mightily in me. Yeah. Yeah, the word is working in me. Come on, come on, somebody. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care if you're sick. Come and say the word is working. Come on, let's talk to the circumstance. Before we leave, before we leave, speak to the circumstance. Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. The word is working. Change is happening. Things is happening. Praise God. There's a shift in my spirit. There's, there's a shift in my understanding. Hallelujah. I see myself. I see myself. I see myself. You got to see it before you can achieve it. You got to see it before you can achieve it. You got to see it before you can achieve it. Now, Father, open your eyes. Because only you can do that. I can pray for you to do something in them, but they have to be receptive to it. Open their eyes that they may see. So they can be what you said they can be. Seeing through the eyes of God. Help us to see what you see, Lord, about our future. Help us to see what we need to see concerning this nation. Help us to see, Father. Help us so we can prepare ourselves for, to make the adjustment that we need to make. Help us to see what's coming on the pike. Where is open to your prayers? In the name of Jesus, I pray. No matter who you are, where you are right now, believe. That's all God asks us to is believe. And let it be accounted for righteousness for you. It's not doubt, it's not fear, it's belief. Belief is simply saying yes, amen. As we go our separate ways today, I pray that if you're here and Jesus is not the Lord of your life, not the center of my God, what are you waiting for? Make him the Lord of your life. Because you know everything you try beyond Christ will not work. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. So let me bless you before we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you. I pray that the Lord lifts his countenance on you and gives you his peace. In the absence of all things harmful and the presence of all things beneficial. I pray that nothing is missing, nothing is broken. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all who agree said, see through God's eyes. God bless you.